This week on the video season ticket, let's head several hundred miles to the northwest, to Wyoming. After a flight to Denver, it's a short 95-mile drive through a rolling landscape to the state capital of Cheyenne, population of some 62,000. Cheyenne, besides the head of state government, is famous for the Union Pacific Railroad, for years the state's largest landowner, and for Esther Hobart Morris, who led the fight for Wyoming to become the first state to grant women full suffrage, that in 1890. Up the road toward Laramie, another 50 miles or so, you'll see a lot more rolling landscape, a lot of antelope, and you'll come to the Lincoln Pass, where the elevation is some 8,600 plus feet. Beyond that lies the city of Laramie and home of the University of Wyoming Cowboys. In a state whose population only numbers some 400,000, Laramie is the third largest city in that state with just some 24,000 residents. And it's said that War Memorial Stadium becomes the state's fourth largest city on game day. The University of Wyoming, with its 10,000 students, is a source of pride for this far west state and certainly rivals Texas Tech for friendliness. Make no doubt about it, though, that on game day it is a big event as the Cowboys will be trying hard to stay in the saddle against the Red Raiders. But will they have the horses? Well, we'll soon see on week three of the video season ticket. Hi everybody, welcome to Laramie, Wyoming. Hey, look at those red pants the Red Raiders unveiled. First time we've seen those in a couple of years. Texas Tech kicks off. A 25 mile an hour wind at his back and Lynn Elliott kicks the thing almost out of the end zone. What a kicker he is. Well, let's go from the first play of scrimmage. This will be Jim Pennington for Wyoming. He goes for left guard for three before Matt Wingo and Harry Dias pull him down. Four plays later, quarterback Tom Carranzas. It's Ryan Yarbrough who goes for a gain of 20 before he is finally pulled down. A lot of missed tackles on this day. Four plays later from the 29, Carranzas passes to Yarbrough. It is tipped and there he is, number six. Tracy Soul comes up with another interception. We'll show it to you again from the ground level as Tracy always seems to be in the right place at the right time. Believe the ball was tipped maybe by Anthony Wiley. I don't believe Brian Dubisky got there. However, Tracy Soul did get there and he's gonna take the ball all the way back to the Texas Tech 31 and kill that first Wyoming threat. I'll tell you on the day, Texas Tech really had a tough time with their secondary. As a matter of fact, you might wanna have the small children leave the room because this really gets ugly later on in the ball game. Well, you'll see a lot of this. Mark Bounds, and what a day he had. He kicked the ball for a 52 yard average. On this time, he kicked it for 62 yards, but man, there is Robert Rivers, and he takes the ball. There he is being trapped about the 25 by Mark Bounds, and then Tracy Saul missed him. He finally is pulled down at the five yard line, but bring it back. Wyoming had a penalty on the play, and they will start at the nine yard line. This will be Hendricks. He will go at left tackle for four before he's finally going to be met by linebacker Steve Carr. What a good year Steve Carr is having. There's Harry Dias, looks like Brad Phelps also in on the play. And that brings in Fleming to punt as the Red Raider defense holds. He kicks into that 25 mile an hour wind. The ball bounces at the 48, but my goodness, look at this bounce. Tracy Saul says, no thanks. And the ball rose dead at the 34. Texas Tech, second and 15 from the 29. Jamie Gill, a quarterback going deep for Anthony Stinnett. It's too far. And that's just one of the uh, Almost highlights we'll have to show you in this first half because as we said, it was really ugly. But I'll tell you, a lot of Texas Tech fans 
from the Colorado and Wyoming area, and they were there to support the football team. Make it fourth and 20. Wow, Mark Bounds almost had the ball blocked, but he got it away. It rolled out of bounds at the 32, 45-yard punt, as we said on the day, a 52-yard average. First and 10 for Wyoming. Carranzas throws. He hits Robert Rivers, and he gains 17 and a first down before he's brought down by Scotty Allen and Tracy Sowell. Two plays later from the 49, Carranzas rolls right and hits Rivers again, who had a big, big day before he's finally knocked down. Again, a gain of 17 yards. Five plays later, this will be Hendricks. Look at that massive hole over left tackle. He pushes his way into the end zone, and Wyoming upsetting Texas Tech at this point. It is six to nothing, 4.50 left in the first quarter. Well, Fleming, who is the punter, as well as the place kicker, puts the ball into the wind. Scotty Allen takes it at the five. He will return for 23 yards up the middle before he's pulled down at the 28. Let's move to third and nine. Ball will be on the Texas Tech 29. Gill still at quarterback, and he'll find little number 88, Byron Hooper, for a gain of 16 and a first down. Let's move two plays later. Second and 17. Ball on the 38. Gill still at quarterback. He will hit former walk-on Keith Cripps. And Keith will catch the ball after a gain of nine along the near sideline. Make it third and eight now. Ball at the Tech 47. Jamie Gill back to pass. Straight back. Looks, looks, throws. Mike Honeycutt makes the catch and pulls it down at the 40 yard line for the Red Raiders. Let's move now to third and seven on the 36. Jamie Gill throwing for Cripps along the sideline, incomplete, and the drive bogs down. That brings on Lynn Elliott for a 54-yard field goal attempt. The ball just sails to the left. It's no good, and Wyoming leads six to nothing at the end of one quarter. Second quarter action now. Spike Dykes not quite sure what to make of that. As you'll hear later on, he said the altitude certainly had nothing to do with it. Second down now, second and 10, and there's big Freddie Perry, one of the few times that Red Raider defense put any pressure on Carranzas, and he is sacked for a loss of four. Let's move the Texas Tech's ball now. Second and nine, Robert Hall at quarterback. It's uh, at the 12-yard line. He rolls out and hits number 49, Jeff Hume. We will show you the replay on that. A good year for Jeff this year. There's Robert rolling, he throws. Jeff catches the ball. Look at this, he runs into the Wyoming cornerback and that put that kid out for the season with a busted shoulder. Jeff, on second effort, picks up another four or five yards. Let's move to first and 10. Ball is on the 27. And my goodness, don't the Red Raiders have a nice uh, stable of fullbacks. Here's Louis Sheffield. He goes at the middle, and second effort gets him four. Drive bogs down, fourth and six from the 31. Mark Bounds, look at this. Look at the height on that football and that punt. Ball goes 69 yards and into the end zone. That sets up first and 10 from the 20. This is Harris sweeping right. There's number 91, sophomore Mike Lissio. Nice play, no gain on that play. Two plays later, Carranzas hits Rivers over the middle. My goodness, running away from Scotty Allen and finally pulled out of bounds after a gain of 19 yards. Two plays later, Carranzas will hit Yarborough. Watch this play. He has to scramble, throws the ball. It's caught. Anthony Wiley causes the fumble, and there's Johnny on the spot. Scotty Allen setting the Red Raiders up deep in Wyoming territory. Show you again. See Anthony Wiley. Great job of stripping the ball right there. One hop looked like a basketball, didn't it? Scotty Allen takes off, and all he sees is end zone as he heads up the field. You'll see the uh, official come in. The fumble cannot be advanced. Great block right there by Jackson. And the ball will uh, be the Red Raiders on the 50-yard line. Robert Hall, quarterback the second quarter, and here he is, the man under. He will throw over the middle, but my goodness, on third down, it is intercepted by Corey Talitz for the Cowboys, and he returns at seven yards. So a wasted opportunity for the Red Raiders. First and 10 from the Wyoming 46. This is Hendricks at right end, loss of one. Look at Matt Wingo slicing in, one hand pulls him down. Nice play. Show you the replay on that. Look on this, the pursuit for the Red Raiders really flying over there. Now, they will uh, catch the Red Raiders on that pursuit here in just a minute. Second and fourth from the 35. Rivers on that reverse. We talked to you about that pursuit. Had he not slipped, he may have scored. As it was, he moved to the 35. Let's move now. Second and fourth from the 19. Hendricks at left tackle. He gains two more, and there's Matt Wingo on the defense. 
You'll see that Red Raider defense here still trying hard. There is Tracy Soul also coming in. Maybe Brad Phelps along with Matt Wingo and uh, Carranzas here throwing in the end zone. There is uh, Rivers. He goes in for the score. Wyoming goes up 12-0. That's where it was at halftime. Big treat for you this week. The Red Raider Band made the trip to Laramie, and they performed at the halftime. So let's hear some of that great performance. Let's go to second half action. Fleming kicks off short. That's Don Howells. He sets the Raiders up at the 39. Let's move now to second and 12. R Jamie Gill in at quarterback. Nice fake. Hands the ball off to Anthony Lynn. Couple of good blocks from his offensive lineman. And he picks up 18. We'll have a replay for you. See big Jason Duval there along the offensive line. Couple of nice blocks. Good cut by Anthony Lynn. And he picks up 18 as we said. Let's move to first and 10 at the 45. Lewis Sheffield will take the... Hand off up the middle, and he goes for nine and close to another first down. There you go, the dance girls on the side. They're happy. Tech trying to get back in this ball game. First and ten, ball at the 32. Bam Morris on the draw up the middle, and he gains 16 and a first down. Again, we'll show you as Bam goes up the middle. Good blocking by that offensive line. They had a tough time of it, but a couple of good drives on the day. Make it second and 12, ball on the 18. Again, the draw play will be effective. This is Sheffield. He makes a nice move to jump one of his own men. Goes down the left sidelines, may get in. No, stopped at the two. Replay for you. See Lewis jump one of his men right there and go down the left sideline. Almost got in on the play. Make it first and goal from the two. Sheffield again will get the call. Great blocking right up the middle. Touchdown, Texas Tech. And with uh, 61 yards in nine plays, Lynn Elliott's extra point, and Texas Tech is right back. Wyoming 12, Texas Tech 7, 12-13 to go in the third quarter. Texas Tech to kick off. Look where this ball goes. 30 mile an hour win it is back. Lynn Elliott puts it in the knot hole gang. First and 10, Wyoming from the 20. Hendricks will find a big hole over the left side as he did most of the day. And he goes for 16 and a first down. Not very good tackling by the Red Raiders on this day at all. Make it first and 10 from the 47. There's Fred Petty stopping Hendricks for a gain of one. Five plays later, Hendricks at the right side. He bounces off, and look at this second effort. When all is said and done, 
He will be pulled down after a gain of 14. On the next play, first and 10 from the 23. Look at uh, Mike Lissio, great defensive play. Charge and knocks the uh, pass down as uh, Carranzas let it go. Four plays later, Carranzas fakes, rolls right. He hits Baker, but uh, look at Matt Wingo. Wham, stops him for a gain of, oh, just three at the six yard line. Show you a replay on that. Ben Kirkpatrick in pursuit, and there's Matt Wingo with a nice tackle. Two plays later, Hendricks will go at the left side. He will lose two. There's a Harry Dias, I believe it was, but Matt Wingo comes in to finish him off. And then fourth and five from the Texas Tech five. Fleming with the field goal, it is good. 75 yards, 16 plays, and Wyoming increases their lead to 15 to seven. Fleming kicks the ball off. Texas Tech with the wind at their back, and this is Kirby Adams. He gets it at the 12. He will return 24 yards and sets the Red Raiders up at the 36. Jamie Gill, quarterbacking in the third quarter. He will make a nice fake, roll right, look for a receiver. Nobody open. He's going to gain five. Jamie running a little bit more this year than in the past. Second and five from the 41. Anthony McDowell will slide through the hole in the middle. He goes for 26 and another Red Raider first down. Remember the score is 12 to seven. Tech playing miserably most of the day, but they have a chance to get back in this ball game. There's the replay as Anthony picks up 26. Four plays later, the drive bogs down. Fourth and eight from the 31. Lynn Elliott, 49 yard attempt is good. And the Red Raiders are close. Wyoming 15, Texas Tech 10. Wyoming comes back with the ball, but boy, this is important as they continue to control the ball. There was Harris going for 13, then Harris left, gain of one before Brian Gerlich stopped him along with, I believe that was Brad Phelps. Second and nine from the 47, Carranzas hits Rivers along the left sideline. He's finally pulled down there by, uh, I believe that was Anthony Wiley. Now first and 10 at 31, Harris to the right side. He is swarmed under. Brian Dubisky led the charge, and this is going to be a big series for number 23. Kranzis has to scramble. He's going to be a sacked for a loss of one by uh, Brian. Now we'll show you a replay from the ground level. Look at this. Fights off his blocker, steps in, and makes that tackle. That set up a fourth and 12 from the 33. Fleming comes in to try a 51-yard attempt. It is up and just to the right. So third quarter ends. Wyoming holding that 15 to 10 lead, but Texas Tech certainly in the ball game. Now, Mark Bounds to punt. Look at this punt, 56 yards. Unfortunately, it goes to Robert Rivers. Wow, nice move right there. And here he goes. When all is said and done, it's going to be a 42-yard return. Let's move to second and 10 from the 19. Carranzas has to scramble. Look at this. Hits Rivers. He goes into the end zone. And just like that, Wyoming regains momentum. Wyoming 22, Texas Tech 10. Two possessions later now, late in the ball game for the Red Raiders. Jamie Gill gives off to McDowell. He steps up the middle for 11 and a first down. On second and 10 from the 28, Donald Marshall, sophomore from Grand Prairie, will head right. And boy, this is a nice run. Gain of 20 before he finally steps out of bounds. But that was a nice run by Donald Marshall, who has a lot of speed. Let's move it now to second and four. Ball at the 46. Gill along the sideline. Ball is caught by Byron Hooper. That good for six. And then first and 10 from the 40. Gill complete to Vincent Brandon. Going to be over the middle for a gain of 18 and another first down. Remember, Tech just down now. 22 to 10, trying to get back in this ball game. First and goal from the 10 now. Jamie Gill looks for a receiver, decides to keep and gets down after a gain of four. Out of bounds. Make it third goal from the five. Anthony Lynn takes the pitch, slips down, and he loses four. That brings up fourth and goal from the nine. Gill to throw, looks, sees Hooper, throws. Oh, right in the hands, but he drops the ball, and Wyoming takes over. Let's move it to second and five from the 14. Harris at right tackle for a gain of four before Wingo finally helps pull him down. Make it third and one. Harris at right tackle. No gain. Again, Wingo in on the play. On that previous play, that was Phelps. Big, big play. Look at Scotty Allen. Top of your screen comes in. Blocks the punt by Fleming. The ball is bouncing free. Steve Carr, the closest man to it. He comes up with it. Has an escort. Goes into the end zone. And the Red Raiders are going to score. Lynn Elliott adds the extra point. That made it 22-17. But that's as close as Texas Tech would get on this day. They'll have to get ready for TCU next week. But we thought we would close out this afternoon with that Texas Tech band.
back them up to the goal line. Never, you know, we never played very well in in field position football. Uh, anytime we ever had any field position, we get we lost it. And uh, and you got to give Wyoming the offense credit for that. But still, that's you don't win football games doing that. And then uh, certainly, uh, I don't know. We had no offense in the first half. I don't know how much it was, but it was just nearly nothing. And. Uh, and when you play good teams and you can't move the ball and you can't stop them, that usually leads for a long afternoon, and that's just exactly what happened out here today. What changes did you make at halftime? You moved the ball pretty good the second half. Well, we just we tried to settle down and just, you know, I thought probably we were a little, uh, we were trying to make every play a big play in the first half offensively. And uh, you get to try and so to do that. and. Uh, you forget about making first downs. You know, making first downs is what it's all about, or not making them. And uh, so we tried to have a little more patience and just go run our offense and and stay with it a little better. And uh, I thought we did a good job with that. You mentioned Wyoming's game plan. Were you a little surprised they rushed as much with their leading rusher out for this game? Well, they did a good job. They uh, no, they you know most rushers rush good when they've got good linemen. <laughs> you know, I think I could have made some yards out there today. Their linemen did a good job and. You got to give them credit. They out, you know, they took the line of scrimmage away from us on uh, with their offense and uh, whipped our defensive line of scrimmage. And when that happens, uh, people rush good. And you know, I don't know if they're leading rushers out or who, but uh, you know, they had some guys that could carry the ball and did a good job. Great second effort runs and, and did, a, did a nice job. Well, in the first half, they were uh, twisting a lot like they did. Uh, you know, we knew where they were going to do that. Uh, we were passing a lot in the first half. Uh, we came back the second half and. Uh, started running the ball and we started doing real good and it cut down on their twist a little bit to where they had to start playing the run a lot more and uh, it really helped us out a lot. Yeah, you know, last week they had a real good quarterback and this week this quarterback was a good scrambler. Uh, I was really impressed with their offensive line. They, uh, they had big linemen and they, and they kept us off of him all day. So, you know, you can't get a lot of heat on the quarterback when uh, they got a good line like that. Are you guys executing, uh, or, or are you really hitting and missing out there? We're executing. We just, you know, mistakes here and there, a few busting coverage. Uh, we weren't wrapping up tackling today. You know, we were just bouncing off those guys, and you can't make those mental mistakes. You got to make everything count. You know, you you, you hit the guy, you got to take him down. You can't let him keep running for five, ten yards. I think they were a pretty quick defense. They uh, they did a lot of things at the beginning of the game that that um, that would that kept us, you know. Not, not making very big games, and I think at halftime we just came in adjusted, and, and we did pretty good against them the second half. We just didn't do what it took to win. Does it disturb you two games in a row now, and you guys, uh, how are you going to get over the hump here? I, I just think we just got to come together as a team, just work and just get our habits down and do everything correct, and we'll be all right. But I felt that the ball had a lot you know, better pattern to fly. It seemed like the air was thinner, and I think that did help me out quite a bit. I want to know, were you nervous that first time you kicked up there in Jones Stadium because you've been fantastic ever since? No, absolutely not. I'm, I'm past that now. I think I've played enough that the jitters are out. You know, they said pregame jitters, but I don't, I don't really think that was a factor. It was just a bad drop and a bad kick, and that was my fault. Where the heck did you learn to kick like that, or is that just a gift? Oh, it's something I've been working on for a few years. It's, uh, it's something that I've been working on. I, uh, I thought, you know, I want to take one thing and try to be real, just real good at it, not punting, trying to do trying to do a good job of it and I think we've got the athletes and the ability I just think we don't uh, we didn't get prepared these last couple of weeks uh, you know it wasn't anything that we hadn't seen by the coaches you know the coaches prepared us but I don't think we got mentally ready but uh, you know I've got complete faith in this defense and I, I know the athletes are there and I know we've got the ability are you glad to be back on defense after spending last year on offense I'm definitely glad to be back you know being with guys like Wingo and Lissio and Kirkpatrick and just all the guys on the defense, you know, it's, 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 been, it's been a lot of fun. Intensity increases next week against TCU, doesn't it? Definitely, you know, conference starts next week, and I believe our attitude is going to change a little bit. You know, now it's, now it's for the good stuff, you know. This is what we, we've been playing for all season, you know, to try to go to the Cotton Bowl. So I think our attitude is going to change a little bit, and the intensity will pick up. Scotty, let's describe that play uh, where you scored out there in the fourth quarter. Well, we're in a block situation. We're late in the game. We need a big play. And fortunately, I got through and put my hands up. I didn't think I had a chance at the ball, but it came through and knocked it down with my left hand, and Steve Carr picked it up and carried on in for the touchdown. Boy, you guys having a tough time back there. You get, feel like you're getting shot at in the defensive secondary? 
gosh. Uh, seems like every time we stop them, they come back with a big play. We stop them, come back with a big play. Um, Robert Rivers, he's a great athlete. That's all I can say about him. Picks up next week against the Frogs, I guess. Uh, yes, sir. We, we have to go ahead and get our heads right and try to forget about this game. Wyoming's a good team. We need to start shooting for the Southwest Conference Championship. It's, it's been real tough. Uh, we gave up the inside route today. today. Didn't really give up anything long. Our coverage was okay a couple of times on the inside route. We looked back at the quarterback and got off track, and that's how they completed most of the passes inside. But uh, we didn't really play as good as we should have. Not downgrading the ride outs. They have good wide receivers, and they ran some good routes, and they're real quick too. So they're a good ball club, and the wide receivers did a good job against us. Let's talk about you with your inexperience. Can you feel yourself growing as a defensive back every game? Yes, I'm getting a lot better on cover one. Uh, the coach has given me a lot of responsibility in playing cover one. Plus the other guys too, he's given them a lot of responsibility too. So as a team, we're, we're, growing, we're growing real good. Hopefully we'll be ready for conference and we can tighten it up. I don't know. I don't think we have to reassess our goals. I think our goal when we started this season to have a great football team, be a contender for the Southwest Conference. And you know, let me tell you something. If you think this bunch is going to lay down and die now, they're not going to do that. They're, uh, they've got a lot of heart and they've got a lot of fire and a lot of fight in them. And, and they'll respond. They really will. It's disappointing. It really is disappointing to lose football games. And when it quits, quits being disappointing, you need to get out of the business. But, uh, but also, you've got to be realistic sometimes, too, I think. And, uh, and they, their coach, Joe Tiller, did a better job getting their team ready to play football today than our coach, Spike Docks, did getting our team ready to play. And that's just pure and simple. That's a pretty good short evaluation of what the difference was, probably. Does it worry about the passing defense? And you know TCU's going to throw the darn ball. It always worries you. It, it really does. They had a guy we couldn't cover today, and that worries you. And, uh, and I was worried. I mean, I was disappointed that we were not able to respond better. You know, when they, when they keep hurting you with the same play, and look, you know, we, we just got to get better at that kind of stuff. We really do. And, uh, and I think we will. I really do. I think. Uh, you know, we, we don't have any excuses, but we've got some guys that have not played a lot of not played a lot of pass defense for us, and uh, and they're going to have to respond better. They really are. Or we're going to have to give them better weapons and better tools. Maybe uh, maybe at times we ask them to do some things they can't do. Uh, we knew that Rivers many times today was going to run across the middle, and we knew what what they were going to run and told them, and uh, and we couldn't get it stopped. So maybe maybe that's a little bit of uh, asking somebody to do something they can't do, and that's not very good coaching. We'll see you next week. See you next week. Well, that's our show this week, everybody. We certainly thank you for being here. A couple of points. Whether you lose to the University of Wyoming or beat the University of Texas, you need to support this university. From the administration and T. Jones to the coaching staff of Spike Dykes and his coaching staff, it just doesn't get any better. On the subscription update, we asked for your help last week. We got in about 25 subscriptions. We need 275 more to make it a go for 1992. And I would really appreciate it if each one of you would call and ask one of your friends to join us here on the video season ticket or just call me right here on the back of your weekly video sub season ticket subscription box and I'll be glad to talk to you. I'm going to uh, Odessa this week to talk to the Red Raider Club. Hope to get down to Corpus Christi. I'd like to meet with your group. Just call me and I'll be there. We open conference play next week against TCU in the run for the cotton. So I hope you'll join us. I hope you'll tell your friends about the video season ticket. I'm Eddie Clinton thanking you for your time, and we'll see you next week on the video season ticket.